Hey everybody, welcome back to Stove Talk with Matt. The video today is about a feature inside a masonry heater or a Russian stove called, uh, once the translation is done, dry slot, dry slit, or dry joint. I'm going to hit play on this. Uh, ch this uh, it's from Alexei Shopchik. I'll leave a link to the video if you're interested in this particular stove. It's all in Russian, so there's no reason for me to turn up the volume. My contention is 95% of stove makers in Russia and everywhere else, um, everywhere else because I think they kind of parrot back what the Russians say, so we'll just say 95% of the Russians, in my opinion, don't understand the dry joint. I'll just call it a dry s slot. I don't know. I see it all three different ways, and I've watched about a thousand of these videos. So let's just say dry slit. I'll show it to you in just a second. And first, let me let me show it to you. Then I'll tell you, how, I think, how they get it completely wrong. There is a use for this feature in a firebox, but it has to be used correctly and properly, or it creates a ton of smoke. It creates a smoke machine. And I don't even think, the, yes, my contention is the Russian stove builders, they parrot back what they get, for, what they hear from Kuznetsov and others, and I don't think they truly understand it themselves. So I have built hundreds, hundreds of um, test stoves here, uh, basically in my backyard. And I've seen it, I've seen if the dry slit is in the wrong spot, it creates a, a tremendous amount of smoke. So let me just hit play, I'll show it to you. And then I'll try to, I don't know if I'm gonna have too many examples, guys, in this video. I, can, I will probably continue to talk about this topic because it's so important. So the, the, the stove here is being built. Um, it's, one, it's a basic Russian stove uh, T, a T-shaped stove. Gases will go up high, go down this descending channel, up this channel and out into the, up into the, se up into the second bell. They'll go high. I'll, I'll show you a little bit uh, in a little bit later. It'll go down the descending channel under a three brick opening and then up. So the, the, these are down channels. The two boxes on the far uh, corners here are up channels into the second bell. Of course, no, nothing is, everything's under construction here. So at this level, you, there's, it, it shows it in a second. Little slits in the back of the firebox that allow some gases to immediately enter this down channel playing, pausing. So this is not the primary way the stove builder wants the hot gases and the flame to get into this down channel. It, they want the gases to go up high and then go down. But through this dry joint or dry slot or dry slit, the um, theory is to put this slit in, uh, Kuznetsov's documentation talk about it being just two to three millimeters or centimeters sorry centimeters big and maybe it, every stove builder does it different sometimes it can be four or five inches long uh, but it's relatively small but the idea this to me they're completely wrong i want to be maybe a little bit slower i'm going to send this to a few russian stove builders so i hope the translation is good i believe they're completely wrong in how they use the dry slot 95 percent of them so Kuznetsov's own white papers or, and reports and uh, you know documentation on the dry joint or dry slit says, oh, it allows cold gases to immediately to escape the stove more quickly. It allows cold gases to stay. So I, I have a problem with this contention, but I, that's not even the biggest problem because if they're right and it allows cold gases to exit into the downward channel, into the first channel more quickly, that creates a lot of smoke. You don't want air conditioner, a cold air, cold air blowing into your downward channel. So um, if they're right, and somehow I don't, be I don't believe even uh, that they understand this because there's so much uh, violent turbulence and mixing in the firebox, the air comes from underneath the grate through the ash clean out door or through the blower door. There's so much violent mixing. The gases aren't going to magically separate um, into cold and hot because they're violently mixing in, in less than a second. They're blasted up to the, to the top or the roof of this firebox. So how do the cold gases separate? That's, it's ridiculous in my opinion, it's wrong. But let's just say um, in some firebox situations, let's say you, if you stack your wood um, let's just say off to the right here, your wood stack is over here, off to the right. 
Well, there could be a lot. This dry slot is a receptacle to receive cold gases. You know, ice cold gases coming up through the grate. Let's just and if if you're allowing cold gases to enter your downward channel or your first channel more quickly, that creates smoke. I've been through it. I've I've built. I can't. T I'll show you. I should show you an example of what I'm building in the backyard right now. Hundreds and hundreds of different examples. If you let cold gases get into the first ch chamber, it will it will smoke and smoke and smoke and smoke. Now there is some advantage to the dry slot for priming, allowing uh, some gases to get into the chamber more quickly, and it, it assists the priming. These these stoves when they turn ice cold. Uh, they don't draft properly until everything heats up. And if you don't have a damper in the right place, it can be very difficult to get them going. Once you get them going, they're supposed to be used continuously for five months in a row every day. So they're never allowed to go cold. That way the draft is maintained. So I'm not, there's not too much here, guys, other than what I showed you. But that's a good example of, I'll, I'll continue to show you how the firebox is built here. But number one, again, all this turbulence and mixing with the cold gases coming up from underneath the grate, the cold gases, this is the theory behind it from Kuznetsov and the Russians, that the cold gases just magically, like magic, separate and, and, and the hot gases continue through the stove. Ridiculous. That's just, there's no way. Um, and if you, and if it does, if you will, and you don't want cold gases going into the first chamber, it will create smoke. I've seen it. It doesn't make sense, guys. And I, I don't know the physics behind this, but I've seen, um, I've almost seen a situation where a firebox uh, creates, will burn up because of the proper combination of air introduced with enough fuel and, and flame, where you burn up, all the smoke is being burned up properly in the firebox. And then along a channel, like a cold air, because a lot of my stove builds for my test builds, are there's no mortar, okay, for many, for most of them, there's no mortar. So every, in some channels, a cold air is allowed to sneak in because for my tests, I don't use mortar. I'm being a little bit slower for the translation. And I've seen it almost go from no smoke back to smoke. Now I've, I know that's, it's, I'm not gonna explain that properly, and like, well, how, once it's cr burned everything up and it's no smoke, how can, could it go back? I've just seen it where like cold air is introduced down the line or in a certain channel, and then it smokes. I, it, I, I'm not explaining it well, but I think this, this is possible. I don't know the physics behind it. Either way, you don't want to air condition, which in the U.S. it means, you know, cold air from a box in your window. You don't want to air condition your channels. So it is better, it's, this is useful for priming. Now if you, the dry slot, it can be used effectively in some situations in my opinion, but the dry slot, um, first off, it's, you know, it's, it, it, it's never should, it never should be used to allow cold gases to escape the stove first, because I, I don't believe it does that. It does, it's not a magic stove. I don't, I don't believe what they say about that. But the dry slot can be used in some situations to create less smoke, but it has to be, the dry slot has to be in an air, a part of the firebox that's right next to the flame. It has to draw flame in to the channel. So in other words, these dry slots in this stove would work if your, if your wood was piled up in the back. So the dry slots wouldn't get any cold air they would get the flames would immediately be drawn through. Um, let me let me show you the, the rest of the firebox here, guys. As he builds it up, the flames would be shot through the small slit first, which then would actually help burn off some of the smoke that's coming down the down channel. You can use the dry slot if it's used incorrectly. See, here's where he's here's where he's opening up the, the, at the as the firebox goes to the fourth row of bricks or the fifth row of bricks. This is where he opens it up and he allows a bigger hole, a big hole for the flames and the gases to get into this first chamber in this T-shaped stove down, up, down, up here. So this is where, okay, then he has these little, 
again, if you're building these stoves yourself, these professional stove makers have, I mean, this doesn't mean anything. You just would make a big hole up here to allow the gases to, to come up and then down. So you don't need these angle slits or anything like that. Um, but the slot, the, the slot opening is, is here. And this is, this is a poor design in this stove, in my opinion. Now, if you, if you have this thing just, you know, some of these Russians, the way they, they burn these stoves uh, twice a day, just they'll fill it, you know, fill it up with four or five, six pieces of oak and burn it in the morning, then at night. Doesn't burn all day long, these stoves. The, the, all the bricks then stay hot and radiate out the heat. The stove's only burning about four hours a day. At the other 20 hours, it's not burning, but it's radiating out heat. So if you fill this thing with six big pieces of, of oak, I mean, there's so much flame. Of course, flame and super hot gas is gonna be pulled through the dry slot. And that will, that will actually, as these flames shoot into the down channel, any smoke that's going down the down channel can be burned up by the flames shooting through the dry slit. But as, the, as it goes down towards coals, as it, uh, you, you know, this huge roaring flame you have in the first 25 minutes, especially with a grate, with the air coming from underneath, once it settles down, and if cold air is finding this slot, then it'll, it'll create smoke. So to me, these slots in the back, you know, again, can help with the priming. If you really have an issue getting it primed and you start it irregularly, you don't burn it every day for five months in a row, these slots can help. But overall, these designs with the slots in the back, in my opinion, create a smoky or smokier stove. These Russian stove makers will almost, for some reason, I mean, maybe they just, they just think smoke is part of the, of the, you know, just part of having a stove. They never show you. I've watched, I don't know, a thousand videos. I don't know how many videos I've watched. I've watched, there's almost few I've, I've never seen. I've seen almost every one that's from a major stove builder over many years. I've watched many of them more than once. It's, it's a weird obsession, but they never show you this, 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 the chimney. They almost never show you the chimney and the smoke and, and what, if, if Alexei builds this stove for real, he won't go outside and show you the chimney. Maybe they all smoke to a degree, and that's just what they have always done, and that's what they put up with over there. We're in the United States, and in Canada, I think we're much more about no-smoke stoves. That's the big fascination with the rocket stoves, or, you know, the J rocket stove or the batch box rocket stove, or um, it's just no smoke, even with even an iron wood stove, if your chimney is insulated and it runs through the center of your house, after the first five minutes, you just there's just ripples above at the chimney. There's no smoke at all for hours and hours. Zero, just ripples of heat. Maybe just everything smokes over there. Right? There's so much masonry and so much lukewarm brick, it would be hard not to smoke. So maybe they just don't care. I don't know. I don't know, but we're more about no smoke here. So I'm not gonna show you any other examples, guys, but so it, it, there, are, there are many stoves where the channel is in the middle, the downward channel is in the middle, and if you use these slits and, 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 and la it should be extremely close to, um, to where the fire is burning. So the flame itself, when it's raging, the flame itself can be pulled in to the slot. Uh, separation of cold gases and hot gases? No, sorry. I, I you know, I've, I've, Kuznetsov has uh, research reports about that. It's no, go go watch a, a masonry heater, a Russian stove when it's fully blazing, um, with with four or five pieces of oak with f flame shooting up three four feet. Most Russian stoves have a very have the grate underneath and a high firebox. A high firebox on its own burns up smoke. There's no, if you have a high firebox, there's no reason for these slits. It will literally backfire and create smoke, the opposite. It does help with draft. So if, if that's that, you know, if someone might say, if I can never get the thing going, it's of no use. Okay, that's, that, that's, that's maybe that's why, that's not why they say the primary use of these slits are draft. They save the separation of cold and hot gases. That's what they tell us over and over. That's what 
Igor Kuznetsov tells us over and over. That's wrong, in my opinion. Um, hot gases go up, and whatever smoke is not burned up completely, um, especially as the, as your five or six pieces of oak, it starts to die down a little bit. You know, or you have some pieces of wood kind of pushed against the side of the brick and gets a little smoky. Then your cold, colder gases, you know, so, some lukewarm gases, uh, finding... Because when it's dying down, not when it's fully raging and turbulent, finding the ch this this channel and finding this channel through the slit is just going to create more smoke. Okay, I guess I'm being a little repetitive. I'll look to your comments. Sorry, I don't have a lot of other examples. I'm sure I'll come back and address this uh, with another video or two. Thanks for being here, guys.